Hi everyone, this is Tom with Escape Artist, and uh, I have a really great uh, pleasure today to be introducing you to James and Laura. They're living out of Australia, and uh, as you know, we've recently done an issue on Vanuatu, which, uh, you know, it's funny, some of the responses I got from when we sent out the easing to people, uh, most people didn't even realize it was a country. Uh, much less where it was. And so it's been fun putting Vanuatu on the map with the escape artist readers and letting everybody know about the incredible opportunities there. We have a lovely couple today, uh, Laura and James. It's nice to, to see you today. We're going to be talking about Vanuatu, and we can even discuss a little bit about Australia and some of your other travels around the area, because I know, you know, when people look to live, work, invest, and retire in an area, it's always nice to hear details from people that have, have really, truly experienced uh, what's going on in that particular region. Now, I know that the uh, the Australia market is pretty hot right now, uh, real estate-wise. Uh, we've heard good things in the States, but it sounds like it's uh, you know getting a little hot. So people are starting to look, as, as Richard Butler, the gentleman who introduced me to you all, entered, said that uh, people are looking for opportunities outside of uh, Australia, and it seems like Vanuatu is one of those areas. So I really appreciate you being with me today and, and talking a little bit about uh, your experiences with Vanuatu. So how are you today? Down under, huh? Okay. Very well. Very well. Thank, Thank you, Tom. <laughs> now, uh, J- James is in the uh, construction business as a, a bricklayer, and then I know that, uh, Laura, you said you're in school and construction management and doing promotions and PR work, so uh, we've got a, a, a couple that are, you know, making it happen, working together. Do we do we have any kids in the it, nearby? That's why we don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy for that. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That's great. So just, uh, I guess, tell me a little bit more about yourselves and what are, you know, some of your hobbies and, uh, you know, how'd you get out to Vanuatu and just give me a little background on uh, on uh, how you met, you know, Richard in general. Well, first, first of all, um, I went over to Sydney to see my brother in Australia, um, and I, uh, I met his uh, his partner in crime in Jody, and uh, she introduced me to Richard. Um, it was um, it was all about um, an investment over in Vanuatu. Um, uh, I liked what she was uh, talking about in that had a, a golf course and it was a luxurious lifestyle. Um, she uh, explained the prices and uh, and then I came home and, and spoke to Laura about it. Um, and uh, within a day, we uh, we had the contact in Richard. Um, we spoke to Richard and um, within a week, we were over to Vanuatu. Um, we, we love the construction industry. Um, that's our hobby in itself. Um, and uh, when we when we uh, found out the opportunity, we um, of a blank canvas in Vanuatu, we uh, we, we jumped on it, and um, and it was quite affordable. Um, so we said to ourselves, why not? I think um, we are in the renovating game at the moment, and we've just finished renovating our first home. And we're looking for another property and the market, although it has dropped in Australia, it's still untouchable, you know, to get a second property. And we heard of this sort of a holiday destination type um, holiday house in Vanuatu and, you know, it was so affordable, so we jumped on board straight away. That's great. So tell me about your, how far is Vanuatu from Australia? You know, what's the trip that you have to make to get there? Three and a half hours away from us. Um, and it's even closer um, when you start going north of Australia, um, like Sydney or Brisbane. From Melbourne, yeah, you're looking at three and a half to four hours. Yeah, three and a half hours. It's pretty much... Direct flight. Yeah, it's, it's less than going to Perth, which is in the same... which is in Australia. So um, it's not that far at all. Um, yeah, it's not that far at all. Yeah. So tell me, I, I understand, is it uh, Vir- Virgin is flying out there now? Do they have a discount airline or are they flying there direct from, from Australia? Well, when, when we first started uh, in, back in July in 2011, um, we, we had to catch two planes, um, but 
and they were only flying once every Thursday from Melbourne. We're now um, in such a short period of time, um, the flight schedule um, and so many airlines have, uh, are trying to jump on board. Um, and and we're, we're finding that, that we're getting cheaper airlines and, um, and more airlines to choose from. So, um, yes, Virgin is, is uh, one of the airlines, um, but there are many other airlines that are starting to, to climb on board. Okay, great. And tell me about, uh, you know, upon your arrival, what was your experience in Vanuatu and what was your general impression and what, what will people see when they land there? Is it just a, an asphalt strip with a bunch of beaches and palm trees or is it developed? Uh, what's it look like? Well, it, I, I think when we first arrived in the airport, it was finally hot. I mean, in Melbourne, we're renowned for the cold weather, so it was beautiful to get off the plane, and it was just, it was humid, but a beautiful heat, and the people were friendly, and the music was happening in, even inside the airport, so um, it was the middle of the night, so we couldn't see a lot, but um, I tell you what, when we woke up in the morning and stepped out of our villa, which was fronted onto the beach, it was, yeah, it was absolute magic. Boy. That's great. And, and in, in Geelong, it's uh, it's very cold here. Melbourne in Australia, it's um, the summer's quite nice. Um, it's not extreme heat, but it's it's quite nice. But then in winter, it can get very dark and cold. And when you can have the ability to um, step into inside a, a place that's sunny, warm, people are so happy, um, it makes you want to go back so quickly. Like um, we're already organising a flight over there. Yeah. Um, not only to look at our investment, but um, to have a nice holiday. Um, I think I think that's just the simple fact. It's a beautiful place to have a holiday. Now I know, in like in the Caribbean, we have all the Caribbean music and the steel drums. Is it a different flair or a different style in Vanuatu? Is it uh, more of a tribal music, or what? what what's the flair of uh, Vanuatu and the culture? Simplicity. I think it's yeah. it's it's. It's, it really is a blank canvas. There's, um, they've got their own culture, and um, it's unique. Yeah, and they they explain that culture to you. Um, and if you have the time to listen and and and, uh, and explore their culture, you know you can really find some good people, um, happy people. And um, yeah, they have their uh, what do they have there? Their, their, um, their own tribal music. In yeah, itself. tribal music um, and dances. And, and dances. Uh, and the Polynesian dancing that you're right. fortunate yeah. enough at your resort to watch. And they come out and they do dances and bang on the drums and, yeah, yeah like you're saying. But it, but it, it really is just the, like it's not in your face. It's, um, you know, if you want to explore their culture, you can. Um, you're invited to. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's very simple in its own right. James, you kind of got the surfer look going on. Is there surfing there? <laughs> um, to, surfer. Well, 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 yeah, ex- exactly. I must be. Have you ever it, jumped on a board before? No, <laughs> I've actually never surfed in my life. I must just have the uh, the look for it. But uh, it's um, well, when we were there, there was no real waves there, was there? It was no, more, it was more quite of, still. Just a relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. Um, yeah, no it, way. It, it no. was basically <laughs> lie, lie down on a beach chair and uh, and gain a suntan. I got you. Now tell me about uh, every. Uh, it seems like every island situation they have issues with bugs. Can you tell me about? You know, do people get bit? Are there the uh, the typical sand sand fleas that sometimes people get on the beaches at sunset? Do you have the same things you do in other destinations? I am one to get bitten the moment I go out the door here. Um, and I didn't get bitten once, which is very, very surprising because they good. attract to me mosquitoes. I'm not sure about sand flies, but yeah, I certainly didn't get bitten once, which was great. <laughs> and I would know, I would know. <laughs> Absolutely. It was very surpri- no, it was very surprising. Normally you would think you were on a, on a tropical island, you, yeah. would, you would get bitten and there would be flies and, and what have you, but there, there wasn't at all. Tell Only now about- that you mention it. 
Tell me about the uh, cool. I, I tell you, I've been to juris, I've been to destinations uh, uh, that, boy, I got to tell you, I I, <laughs> I, I wished I would have had like a massive bug spray, but uh, that's that's good to hear because uh, sometimes people have an issue with that, and that is a big deterrent for some people. But tell me about uh, the cuisine as far as the food and the restaurants there. What what was your experience on the entertainment, being able to get food, and you know, just general quality of food there? Um, food's uh, locally grown, um, and it's all fresh. Um, and uh, is the meat from New Zealand? Yeah, it is. The meat, yeah. yeah, the meat, meat is from New Zealand. The beef. And I, I love me meat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. there we are. <laughs> um, and uh, but it's mostly the fruit and vegetables that uh, that you know they're so they're so fresh and um, they're, they're straight from the market. Um, you know, we mostly dined in the uh, in, in our hotel, um, in our villa, um, and uh, and your vegetables and fruit, breakfast, lunch, and tea. You know, it, it was it, like it was second to none. Most times down here in Melbourne, you buy it from a supermarket that's got you know all of its preservatives and all that sort of stuff. But you go over there and and it, and it's just locally grown and and produced off. On your plate on that day, really mm. picked it and, and yeah, put it on your plate. Really that day. Same with the shellfish and all the seafood. Oh. Yeah, it's really yummy. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that has my attention. I love, love seafood. So tell me, uh, did you do any water sports while you were there? I know they have, they have world-class snorkeling and scuba diving, but uh, tell me about some of the other water sports that they have going on there. They, they do have their, um, their, their normal, the snorkeling and the scuba diving, and they can come up to your villas and per- personally give you uh, um, scuba diving lessons. We do have some scuba, scuba diving, diving lessons. lessons. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> to be honest with you, we were that jam-packed for, for three or four days with Richard, <laughs> who was showing us Vanuatu personally, um, about the, the whole country, um, you know, taking um, boat rides, ferries, um, you know, all sorts of things, just to show us the country as a whole um, more than, uh, than what its activities had, um, its cultures. Um, I can't really say. We did do, I know the um, place where we stayed at, Breakers Resort, mm. they offered um, complimentary scuba diving lessons in their swimming pool, mm. which was really helpful because the first time we learned to scuba dive was off the back of a boat on the Great Barrier Reef in uh, Australia. So it was really great to finally learn how to scuba dive in a swimming pool. Yeah. Um, but I've got to say, I never got out in the ocean. <laughs> no, no, South Pacific, not. anyway. <laughs> it didn't get me out of the swimming pool. That's, I gotta tell you, to be thrown off the back of a boat into the Great Barrier Reef, that's a, that's quite a jump on scuba diving lessons, isn't it? <laughs> that's great. Not, so, at least they work for you. <laughs> well, I've obviously seen the villas, and, and I've read, uh, you know, some of the information that that Richard has seen me uh, sent me. What, uh, you know, what's the vision that you see that they've created? What what's going to happen? Is it is going to be a place where a lot of people from Australia and Asia come for the holidays? Is it going to be mostly a tourism market? Or do you see that there will be some expats relocating there and opening tourism businesses? Is, is there room for growth there? Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it, it really is a blank canvas. I mean, anyone can go there and, and start um, construction, um, any type of business. Um, there's a lot of expats for a future. Um, it's basically um, Fiji or, or Bali. Um, yeah. A, a cleaner, but but ten years before, um, you know, twenty years before, and 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 it's only just starting to develop. Um, so you know, if you if you got in now. you know, you, you can basically develop anything you want there, um, whether it's a fish and chip shop. Or uh, a construction business, or um, you know anything. There's room for development. There's, 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 that's all. It's basically um, a block of land, and um, and you can build anything that you, you that you want there. <laughs> really. When you go inland a little more, it's almost like Jurassic Park. 
you know, with a with a view, wow. <laughs> with a real ocean wow. sort of view. So you got to think of that. You come away from the water where all the resorts are at the moment, and it's Jurassic Park. So it's just barren land at the moment, and it's got just a you know a world of opportunity mm. to, for a developer's dream and and for you know a holiday maker. If you can have a little piece of paradise, why wouldn't you? So, are there some eco uh, eco tourism opportunities there? I mean, there's there's uh, like jungle there, and is there like eco tourism opportunities? When you, when you mentioned Jurassic Park, I I envisioned kind of like Panama and the 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 Bocas del Toro Islands. There was a lot of jungle there, but uh, is there jungle there? It's not big jungle as such. No, no. Yeah, just more of uh, trees um, and and. And coastal, coastal line. Coastal and yeah, um, but uh, j- just so much land um, with with, uh, uh, with not not much population um, and, and so much room to move. Um, hence the reason uh, of um, all these developments starting in Vanuatu, right? Um, because there's so so much room to move um, that you can um, if you if you have the money you. You can you can go and create anything that you wanted to create. Um, so your imagination is is the the only limit um, when when you go over there. It's untouched. Um, and it, and what happens down here is is that everything's populated, everything's polluted. Um, and I, I don't know what it's like over in America, but I'm sure it would be the same. Um, you know and. What you have here is a, a country that's trying to be eco-friendly, um, and it's and it's starting from stage one. It's starting from ground ground floor, and uh, and and basically um, the, the only limitations is that you keep it um, clean, you keep it eco-friendly, you um, you know you, you try and um, help Vanuatu as a whole um, instead of uh, come in there and, and pollute it like sometimes we do. Right. And here in Australia or in America. Tell me about uh, your experience as far as the infrastructure that's there, as far as power. Is the, is the island powered by generators? I, I would assume they have generators there that provide the electricity? Yes, they have generators. Um, if you stay around the resort area, that's where you're going to have all the main supply of power. It's when we did our um, day trips around on the tarmac around the island that we were introduced to areas that don't have power currently um, and it, it's starting to go in but Richard was sort of showing us that these people they're living in villages that don't have power they've got some water from the little rivers that run through but yeah power you know it's just a matter of connecting it up mm. and this is all in process at the moment the generators is the way uh, now I, I've talked to I've interviewed people in Bali and I've interviewed people in uh, Fiji and there, you, you all use this term that we kind of uh, get a little scared of in the United States, and it's called cyclonic activity. Uh, you know, have you all experienced any storms down there or had the opportunity to uh, be through some storms? We call them, I guess, hurricanes. I guess a cyclone would be similar, but uh, tell me about the weather and you know, some of the situations that people honestly deal with there. We've had some flooding in far north Queensland, which you probably heard about, um, and that was serious stuff. A lot of people lost their homes and lives that happened um, last year. Um, and it's interesting, I, moved, I went up to Sydney for a conference only last week, and um, they had some serious storms and flooding. And, and, you know, it's only a matter of time where you, you start to see the effects of global warming. It's pushing its way down, and pretty soon we're going to be experiencing it in Melbourne. We really are, if we're not careful how we use our resources. And, and specifically, specifically to Vanuatu, we, we haven't um, explored it in, in, the, uh, in the December, January months where um, it, it is monsoon um, season. Mm. And, you know, there are, there are, like, it's a volcanic, um, you know, place on the earth. But uh, we haven't, um, everything's con- Constructed there, um, earthquake proof, cyclonic proof, um, all to New Zealand standards. Um, and uh, from the stories that we've heard from people who have been over there not only a few times, um, but uh, they've actually lived through it, um, you know, and, and everything's built so um, everything survives. 
Um, it's not like here where we have um, colour bond roofs or tiled roofs and people, you know, and the wind and the, and the rain actually come in and, and on top of you. It's, it's built to a design that the air will just flow through. So they're very conscious of it. Um, and, and, yeah, I agree. You know, every, everything's, um, you know, like even in Melbourne, which is so far moved from the equator, um, we're still experiencing, you know, high wind in storms and all that sort of stuff, aren't we? So, you know, when we went over there, there was nothing. It was just blue skies and, you know, no wind whatsoever. Um, you know, it's just, just like everywhere, really. Uh, what, what's it like in America? Is it, is it the same thing, you know, high storms, storms and hurricanes and all this sort of stuff? Well, I mean, we have, we have a certain season like you do, and that, I guess that was one of the questions that I had is the cyclone season or cyclonic, the, the heavy weather is in the what would be considered our winter months. Uh, our winter months start in November, uh, September time. Uh, we get fall time and, and we get winter. We're in winter right now. So it sounds like uh, it's the um, probably on the same um Longitude like is the Caribbean and in, in Latin America because their their summer times actually start their summer times start in December. So uh, you, you it, the, the rainy season, I guess, is there a rainy season as it's defined in in uh, the islands? Do y'all have a particular time of the year they call the rainy season like they do in the Caribbean? Uh, we don't in Melbourne, but that, I'm sure they do. Yeah, um, they would. And it's around yeah. it's around December to January. The, the, peak, the non-peak seasons. The non-peak yeah. seasons, yeah. But the peak season would be around July. Um, yeah. Same season as you guys, really. Um, yeah. Their, their summer would be uh, America's summer. Yeah, that's great. That's super. Well, um, let's see what else uh, we, we talked about. Uh, tell me about crime and safety. How how'd you all feel uh, from a crime standpoint or any type of drug activity? Is there anything going on on the island that's an issue? No, not the weasel. No, I don't think we really left our resort during the night time. Um, it had everything that we needed at the resort, um, so we didn't see any activity like that. Um, you know, if there was any drug sort of thing taking place in the town during the day, we didn't notice anything. No. Okay. Um, and what about health care? If you would have uh, gotten injured or anything there, is, was there any form of health care or medical facilities where you felt like you could have gotten some treatment? That's, a, that's an interesting question, Tom. That's a good one. <laughs> um, to be honest, we, we, we were pretty protected. Um, we had someone there with us who uh, near, near the country in Richard. Um, so if anything had happened to us, I'm sure we were being protected. We had our insurances and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but in, the, in Port Vila, which is the main, main which is the capital of Vanuatu, um, yes, there are those, um, those facilities. Um, you know, when you walk down the street, there are, your, you know, your local cast and, you know, your, your health stores, your doctors and all that sort of stuff. They are d- developed enough to have that. But uh, as you get further out, uh, um, you know, as Laura was saying about the electricity and power like that, it does get a little bit more remote. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, but then again, you're only about um, 10, 15 minutes away from the Port Villa. So it's really, you know, further inland, you get a little bit, bit more remote. But if you stay in Port Villa, then, yeah, all your, all your health requirements are there. That's great. Now let's uh, we'll talk about Richard Butler for a minute. I know Richard is uh, one of the primary developers there, and uh, he's the one that's introduced uh, escape artists to the opportunities that are in Vanuatu, and, and certainly we're interested in uh, knowing, um, you know, as, as far as about the investments. And I don't want to go into any of the great details about them, but uh, in dealing with Richard, did you uh, find that everything was what he said it was, and the paperwork was all in order and Everything that you did with Richard was uh, first class. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We had, we had the security of a family friend introducing us to uh, Richard, um, but uh, through our journey with Richard, um, we've be- become close mates with him. Um, we speak to him, and he's on email to us um, at least four or five times a week, um, just giving us up. Updates about Vanuatu and talking to us about Vanuatu and, and securing our investment. 
Um, you know, example, we win titles around about and, you know, contracts and what have you. Um, so I think it builds up on the deposit win, I think. Mm. Yeah, but he certainly keeps you up to date. And I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest worry when you invest a little bit of money mm. um, is not getting any contact. But we certainly, we get more contact oh, than I do my parents. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should invest with your parents and they'll, they'll start calling you. <laughs> <laughs> or they should invest maybe. with us and we could all just elope. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> That's fun. So, uh, yeah, I laugh because I get emails from Richard as well, and I guess he uses some voice recognition software, and he has to be very careful about what he sends to people sometimes. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't understand. I don't always understand what his emails are. I have to decipher them a little bit because he's uh, he, he says he's using some new voice uh, recognition software, so he doesn't have to type anymore. So. Uh, I'm a- not to that part yet, but yeah. sounds interesting. Time, to, to, look forward to, time to pass it on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely so. Well, if there, uh, is there anything, um, you know, any mistakes you made there? Is there anything people should be should watch out for? Uh, any words of warning? Um, I mean, they have lawyers. They have lawyers there. They have. Uh, we haven't uh, come across them yet. Not well, I, I, I know. I know one exactly. of the, if, we, if we come across it, we'll have to email you through through the warnings. But at the moment, um, we. Okay, and what what was the number one thing you did that you just really really. Sorry. I said, what was the what was the number one thing that you did that you really liked there? What's the one thing that you would tell everybody to do? Oh, um, I, I think I think you should just relax. And also, there's um, so many um, restaurants and fine dining. Oh, yeah. um, uh, there Havana. is Havana. You've got to go there for lunch. It's amazing. It's a <laughs> resort. Havana, Absolutely. okay. Havana Resort. Um, the fish that you kept getting, what was mm. that fish? Mm. Um, you and Richard kept ordering this particular type of fish. It was always, what's the fish of the day? What's the fish of the day, Richard, what he would say? It kept changing, yes, that's right. Yeah, it was beautiful. The fish at uh, uh, Tamanu, mm. another Tamanu, place, yes. another little resort. The Blue Lagoon. The Blue Lagoon was amazing. The waterfalls. Uh, ah, the waterfalls, that's my one thing. Yes, absolutely. I, I know we've mentioned a few there, but um, it, it's basically, a, it's so much to explore. Yeah, um, and, and, you know, the, um, we didn't get to experience the volcano. Um, Next but, time. Uh, that's just off Vanuatu. But there are so many little other islands around Vanuatu as well that need to be explored. Um, you know, and they're only a ferry away, as we discovered. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's all about just you know going over there and just relaxing and, and having nice lunches and uh, sitting in the sun with some cocktails or a beer or you know <laughs> whatever whatever takes your fancy, and um, you know and just living a luxurious lifestyle. Well, that's that's. Hey, I gotta tell you, that sounds like the escape artist dream to me. We we talk about having the ability to live anywhere in the world on your own terms, and it sounds like Vanuatu is a, a nice place to do that. I, I have one last question that I forgot to ask, and it was about internet access. Uh, did you all have any experience with the internet access there? We did. We did. Yeah, yeah, we had the internet access from our hotel reception. Um, it has a couple of computers set up, and you can, you know. Use the internet banking. That's yeah. where yeah, we used it, so it's good. Yeah, it's easily accessible. All right. So, is there wireless act uh, wireless uh, internet there as well? Do you know? Uh, I know wireless Richard activity. used. Yeah, yeah, Richard used. Um, we while did. He was we away. did. We didn't, such. Yeah, the whole roaming thing. We didn't want to get hit with the massive bill. Right. <laughs> didn't go there. We were on holiday as well. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> with with Richard, I, I think he used it. But yeah, uh, I, I, I think you'd have to get a bit more experienced in that, and I guess the more times we go over there, would would realise that. But 
yeah, we, we, we didn't, we, you know what it's like when you go overseas or, you know, you go to another country, you don't know what bills you're going to cop with your telephone or, your, you know, your internet and data and all that sort of stuff. But we know it's very easily accessible through your hotel. That's great. That's good. Well, James and Laura, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I know that the readers will enjoy hearing uh, a little bit about Vanuatu uh, firsthand from people that have not only visited there, but have invested there. And I appreciate you being frank with us and sharing your experience. This has uh, been a joy to meet you. And uh, when I get down there uh, one day down to Australia, I hope, hope to have a lunch with you and meet you myself. You haven't been to Australia. Been at all? To Australia. No, I haven't. I have not been to Australia. I've traveled the other side of the globe, but I, I'm due to go to Thailand, and I'm probably won't be this year. I'm going to go down to Latin America and spend some time in, in South America. But I think next year, uh, I've got three kids that would absolutely love to come there. So that will be a hopefully a full summer trip for us. It would be a lot of fun. It's a great place. Come on down. Come on down. It's a great, <laughs> great place to live. And, That'd uh, be great. Beautiful side of town. Oh. Super. Well, I really appreciate appre- appreciate your time, and uh, just uh, hope you enjoy what we're doing for Vanuatu. We're going to draw a lot of attention to it, and hopefully bring some visitors down there that can experience what you've experienced. And uh, I, uh, like I said, uh, it's been a real joy talking to the both of you. Thank you very much, Thank you. Tom. Thank you.